York City is crazy. People, cars, bikers, dogs on leashes, tourists. It's a crazy thing to see. But what if you couldn't see it? We wanted to know what it's like for over 350,000 blind or visually impaired New Yorkers who've been experiencing New York City in a very different way than we have. This is a day in the life of a blind person in New York City. Today we're in bed -Stuy. We're gonna spend our day with Yvonne, who is a blind New Yorker. Hey, this Hi. is Alex. I'm Alex. Hi, how you? got the you? camera going. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Yvonne is a lifelong caretaker. Before she lost her vision, Yvonne raised her three kids and fostered around 30 more in this very house. She and her husband, Ferris, a limo driver, have lived here for 24 years. I see you taking pictures of my baby. <laughs> yeah, hanging out with the lovely Yvonne today. She's an amazing woman. I hope you can keep up with her. <laughs> Even though Yvonne lost most of her vision 16 years ago, she still learned how to cook and clean up after herself. She uses tools like her Alexa to hear the weather in the morning and her Apple Watch to make phone calls. We don't have to be anywhere until 10 a.m., but today, Yvonne got up at 5. She's an hour early for everything. If I tried to rush, I could drop my beret. So then the panic come, where is it? You know, so, so that's why you don't want to rush. At 7.15, it's time to head into the city for a busy day. What is it like to walk through New York City, a busy New York City street with that cane? A lot of people don't know what this cane means. So you hit a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> for pre-planned trips like this, New York City provides Accessoride, which helps New Yorkers who aren't able to use public transportation get around for the price of a subway ticket. Almost every day of the week, Yvonne goes to the Vision Center right here in the Chelsea neighborhood in Manhattan. They offer a whole bunch of services for the blind and visually impaired. When you're blind, having routines is incredibly important. You can learn patterns and tricks for getting places that you know well. So before her classes at Visions, Yvonne goes to the same place for breakfast every morning. Bacon, eggs, and cheese. Is this to go? Yes. So by counting these, uh, Greats in the sidewalk, Yvonne knows exactly how far it is to get back to the Vision Center. It's four greats. There's number three. Before going blind, Yvonne was a busy New Yorker just like the rest of us. She had two jobs, a whole lot of people to take care of, but then one morning she woke uh, up and couldn't see. I was very frightened. I was crying. And then my husband took me to the doctor. And so it was one of these things where you don't even want to open your eyes because you don't want to know you can't see. Yvonne was left completely blind in her right eye and only has very little vision in her left eye. I just stayed in the bed. I was very depressed. I, you know, I got into a depression. As Yvonne's vision left, so did her sense of purpose. She believed she'd never again be able to do the things she loved. But at Visions, she found a community that helped her adapt and thrive. She learned tools for mobility, household tips, useful skills like braille. She, she gets on me because I don't practice enough. <laughs> and joined a community of hundreds of people experiencing New York without vision. Hi, I'm good. That's Francine? Yes. Okay. It was like just a new family. So, so, so I just started coming alive. She learned she was far more capable than she believed. And pretty soon, Yvonne became a teacher for other visually impaired students. What's going on All right, right now? It's, it's 10 a.m. Students are filing in. It is about time to get started with uh, dance class and aerobics class. And today, we're going to put on this blindfold so we can have the slightest idea of what it's like to be blind, starting with dance and aerobics class. Is that right? Okay, so right now Yvonne is leading this class, Brian is taking it, he's blindfolded, and it's a, it's an interesting thing to, to watch Brian, because he's doing his best, but you know, if he gets disoriented at all, he just has no idea where he is. Brian, turn 90 degrees to your right. There you go. It was scary, it was lonely. Um, I felt very disconnected from the world around me. I want to see some moving. And there was something amazing about when we all started using the uh, rattles. When I couldn't see, they were a lifeline. They were telling me, hey, I'm surrounded by people and we're all listening to the same music. Now I'm using my other senses to understand that I am still connected to this world. At 2.30, Yvonne leads a class called Exploring Chelsea. Every week we go to a different place 
to see what's around the Chelsea area. Today is ice cream day, which is amazing if Alex can get there. It's his turn to try out the blindfold on the crazy streets of Manhattan. I just feel like I'm gonna fall through a manhole or crash into a window or a person or step in poop. Just go totally straight. I don't know what straight is. You're doing it. There's a pole. My bad. Jesus. Ryan. <laughs> There's a bike lane. Got you. I'm trying, I'm trying. Your Jesus. next step is a curve. Jesus. Okay. That was, that was really scary. That was really, this is all really scary for me right now. Okay. Okay. Alex, um, put your hand there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, now you have ice cream in your hand. Yeah. You know what to do from here. <laughs> How well do you feel like you know Chelsea? I don't know Chelsea. That's why I developed this class, so I could get out. So I'll just sit here, be here with my thoughts of yeah. what the heck's happening around me. That's pretty much all I'm thinking about. What is happening around me and where are things happening? For the way back, Yvonne offers Alex her cane. Can you hear the traffic on your right side? Ah, yeah, you cross that? us. Yeah. That means you can't cross. Right. Yeah. It took me a little bit to say. I'm blind because that's not where I want to be. I learned by accepting my disability is better. I imagine you were just, you once you said okay, this is this is what it is, and you said now I got now I now I'm got, I got to do my best here. Yes. What do you remember about um, the Malibu Diner? Well, I remember it has a like green blue awning, but I can't see that right now. Okay, it's purple. Uh, purple. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, there's four like basement covers until visions. Two. Oh, three. That's, that's three. Let's hit four. That's four. <laughs> wow. 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 A that chore, was a journey. Right? Yeah, that was a journey. So that was, there was a lot of anxiety and fear in that. And Yvonne was a very calming guide and teacher. She was like a Yoda. Being blind is really tough. But it hasn't stopped Yvonne and 350,000 other New Yorkers from learning, from living, from taking care of people, from being New Yorkers, just like the rest of us. I don't want no one to, to hinder me to say that, what I, what I cannot do. Yvonne said that her biggest thing that this has given her is courage. Courage to go out in the world and to face those fears because when she's out there and she's crossing the street, those fears aren't gone. It's just that she's developed the courage to deal with that. When I help other people, it gives me more courage to go on and do more for myself. You know, they don't know it, but other people encourage me. I see them dealing with their problem to the best of their ability. And that's what I try to do, just to help people. And it helps me. I'm Yvonne, and this is the day of my life. <laughs>